Welcome to the Girl Stop Playing Podcast. It's your favorite homegirl, Coriel, here to encourage you to stop playing with your potential and start working for what you want in life and in love. Y'all already know that I'm here to bring you the information and the conversation that's going to help you make the money and get the honey. You can have it all if you are willing to work. And we have a working woman joining us in our very special studio. We have Mrs. Marshawn (laughs) Evans Daniels. She is a wife, a mother, a reinvention strategist, and the founder of She Profits. Welcome to the Girl Stop Playing Podcast. Thank you for having me. I like the Mrs. part. I think as listening to everything, you know, being a new mom, but that Mrs. part, I was like, you know, it was a long time in the waiting, so that felt good to hear. We are going to talk about the long time in the waiting because a lot of my audience is in the waiting right now, and Mm -hmm. so we love talking about the business, but there's so much that goes on beyond just making the money. Getting the honey is also often a part of our goals, and we don't often talk about that. Yes. And sometimes not talking about it when you're going through it or wanting it makes you feel like maybe mm-hmm. I shouldn't be or you know there's mm-hmm. like some shame sometimes well there's just a lot of it. really bad images of unrealistic relationships mm-hmm. so especially with entertainers and the Instagram relationships of you know if the guy's not buying you a, a Lamborghini car. yes then he's not about anything so right. we have these superficial views of what creates long-lasting healthy love that's God blessed yep And um, when you're growing a business, I did not understand this until I went through it. The connection between your purpose for the mission you have in your life Mm -hmm. and your purpose partner, that the mission of your life will be challenged more than anything through your love relationships. Your ability to believe in who you are, your worthiness. I I, I became cognizant at one point in a mastermind that I was in. Um, And I, you know, as a I think this was a $12,000 mastermind. It was my first time making an investment like that in mm-hmm. myself over a decade ago. And I remember I was with my accountability partner. We called and checked on each other each morning. And I said, I feel like I have a block. And um, I feel like it's not safe for me to really grow. Mm. And I didn't know why, but she asked me, and this is why it's important to be in community and in alignment. You don't even know where the breakthrough is coming from. Out of nowhere, the truth just flew out. I said, if I, more, if I make more money, I'm afraid I'm going to be single. Whew. That's a thing. I still feel it. I didn't know it. I didn't even know subconsciously that that was um, the stowaway. I call it the stowaway. And in Believe Bigger, uh, the book, I call it Little Me. Mm. I didn't even know because it was unconscious. Because if I was aware of it, then I would have you to do something it, about right. it. Right. And once I was aware of it, then I could at least be in acknowledgement that I'm probably, even in little ways, self-sabotaging if it means that I only charge this Mm -hmm. or if I only play it safe with that. Or if I say, I'm just going to do this and get, get, you know, do a case study versus going all the Mm -hmm, way in. mm -hmm. So there are ways that we can make it seem like we're moving forward, but we're really holding back. And I didn't know that that fear of being single. Now I'm coming out of a relationship where I called my wedding off six days beforehand and found out my fiance was cheating on me. Mm-hmm. So I had reason to be a little, a little, you know, a little, little jaded, yes. little jaded. Um, but I didn't know that there was a connection truly between love and business until that moment. And even, even deeper than that, just even if it's not romantic love, just the emotional mm-hmm. things that sometimes we're holding on to that could be that block. I actually had a, um, a mentor one time who told me, that she did not make her first million until she forgave her father. And wow. I felt like, wow, you know, that was such a profound thing because even if you don't have daddy issues, like we all have something, uh, yeah. we're all dealing with something. And like you said, it's we're suppressing it because we're in survival mode most of the time. So we're doing the things, we're taking the action, we're doing the work, but we're not really digging deep into yeah. like what's stopping us from getting to that next right. level. So I love that you were able to recognize that. Yeah. And I think, you know, over the years, so I started my coaching company in 2010. I was coming out of a broken engagement, mm-hmm. an embarrassing situation. Listen, um, the situation. shame. I mean, people were coming in from all over the world, this fairy tale wedding. I had waited, I had held on to my virginity. <laughs> you were like, well, that's not what we're supposed to talk about. No, let's stop playing about it. Well, so I held on to that. You know, that was something for me and my faith and my faith walk. I believe also in many ways it protected me mm-hmm, from mm-hmm. not. But I was all the way in in this relationship. I had closed down my sports business for it. 
I had started a sports agency managing NFL and NBA players. It was the fastest growing woman on sports agency in less than a year. I had a, my first client was $62 million, signed a $62 million deal. And so I had all of this, but I was willing to close all of that down for love. And I was going to be a bonus mom to his three kids. Mm, mm-hmm. So it was, it was, it was the biggest blessing. But um, when I called that off, I was trying to reinvent. The first thing that I did before I talk about the business part mm-hmm. is I, I got my butt in counseling. Yes. Very quickly. We are advocates for therapy. I mean, it was such a dramatic. I mean, we're talking six days before. If I could take you to that mo- moment. It's a Monday morning before a Saturday wedding. My fiance is on, his, on the plane on his way to Atlanta for wedding week. Did you find out that morning or that's, you, dis- you made the decision that morning? It all happened in the same thing. It was the grace of God that it happened at, in the same moment. Wow. And um, I, it was the woman who he was cheating with. You have to read the book to figure out who she was. <laughs> Wait, you t- so, you, you are you going to say the, your name in the book? It doesn't matter her name. I don't use names because I don't think it's necessary. We ain't even giving you no shine But like you'll that. know who she is. Like the, the nature of the relationship okay. makes it even worse. Okay. I'll just say okay. that. Okay. Makes it even. Gotta get the book, y'all. It makes it even it took it, it, it prolonged my stay in therapy. <laughs> gotcha. And it's funny for those of you who may be going through something hard right now, it's just important to remember one day you'll laugh too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, one day you'll laugh too. But so it's that morning and he's on the plane, he's on his way in town for wedding week. And I call him because I, I'm like, this can't be true. And he has to go because this is back when you couldn't keep your phones mm-hmm, on on the mm-hmm. plane and the flight attendant said, you got to turn this off. And so, um, but I did, I called the wedding off that day. I, but when I say it was the grace of God, I, that night before I had this encounter with the Holy Spirit that I can't really describe. It's never happened to me like that before. Now in retrospect, I believe that grace covers us like armor. We think about grace as this nice soft thing. Grace is really preparing us for the things that are beyond ourselves. Because when I met him, when he landed in Atlanta at the airport, um, all I could say is thank God for Homeland Security. Because when we sat at that restaurant, all I noticed was the sharp knives. <laughs> you know, And there are moments where we can lose everything that we've built mm-hmm, in our emotion mm-hmm. and in betrayal and something that is evil, borderline even demonic. You can, mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that you're not justified in the sense of there was something that was done and there's a natural reaction to react to an attack. Mm-hmm. And so when I say the grace of God, the fact that I made it to the airport, made it back to my home, and I didn't really, I felt like I was handling a, a case for an athlete client. It was kind of an out-of-body experience. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I even called her while I'm on the way. The lady. You got to get the book. Gotta, well, I got you, the book now. You got, you got, the, you got to saying, read the book. I'm just yes. saying. But so, but the great grace, grace, real, I understand amazing grace in mm-hmm. a wholly different way because it protected my income for me not to respond. It protected potentially my liberty. I mean, I could see how a woman just flips, you know, you, I don't think, now later, he went back, I told him he, we, we weren't, he didn't have to go home, but he wasn't you going home with me. You gotta get up out of here. You gotta, mm-hmm. you can go where, he got back on a plane, went back to Chicago. And, but when I got back home and I sat on my couch, the same couch that I had the encounter with the Holy Spirit the night before, I had felt this oak tree presence that entire morning, hadn't cried. I felt like a a lawyer, because I'm a lawyer by trade, handling a case for a client. And, um, but then that oak tree turned into a weeping willow. And that's when the healing, I mean, I wouldn't even say the healing, that's when the reality of me feeling like I did all these things right. I mean, professionally, personally, academically, spiritually, sexually, I fought all these things. And I'm like, God, this is my reward. So that was my, that was what I call now a split rock moment. That was an awakening for a new life that I didn't know that I was blocking because um, whenever you pray the prayer, God use me, you're ask, Ooh, actually asking, you're asking God to split it. you up. Mm-hmm. And if there's something attached to you that's beneath the caliber of you, got to go. It's got to go, but you wouldn't let it go yourself and you probably don't even know that it's beneath you because you don't understand the level of elevation that God's even calling you to. And likely it's because you would never go in the direction he's calling you to. And for me, it was women to help women and 
I had zero desire to work with the women. Because you were coming from sports. I was coming from sports. Mm -hmm. I have two brothers, eight male athletes. I was the woman who said, I have male friends. Yep. I get along better with guys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was on The Apprentice. You know, um, that's a very A-type, masculine yeah. type mm -hmm. of show. I, I, I won the task against the guys. I was the head, the... Uh, the project manager is what they used to call it, for those of you who don't remember The Apprentice. <laughs> for those of you who don't remember that. Um, but I was the project manager, and we won the task of all women's team against the men with a Lamborghini. So I have always gravitated towards the male. Mm -hmm. And it was that, that day after, that the day after the wedding was scheduled to take place. I say scheduled as opposed to supposed to, because there's many what, things mm -hmm. that we schedule that were never supposed to happen. And if you tell yourself it was supposed to, it makes the recovery, reinvention, healing, forward process so much harder because you've told yourself, I'm missing what I was supposed, supposed to have. To, yeah. But you can never, you, you shouldn't miss what we were never supposed to have, but your heart needs to catch up to that reality. Mm -hmm. And so I'm leaning up against this luxury vehicle that he bought me. I'm, you know, thinking that I'm supposed to be in this car going back for an event with Essence Magazine, and then from there to our honeymoon. But instead, we're at the host hotel, and everyone who still flew in town is still there because, you know, we had our we had a rehearsal dinner was supposed to be at Justin's, which is Diddy's restaurant. Mm -hmm. I had thrown a lot of events. I actually, this is some people wouldn't guess because they don't think I'm a partier, which I'm not, but I'm a money maker. <laughs> I threw one of the biggest events they've ever had at Justin's. Mm made the most that they've ever made in one night, including the events that Diddy threw. It was a party? Oh, I threw athlete events. I threw. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. They weren't parties. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. They were experiences. They were, they were experiences, but I mean, I had Rolls Royce, Tiffany and Company as sponsors. I had never done any of that before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm, we, we had the re rehearsal dinner turned into an I Love Marshawn dinner. And that next day, everyone's getting ready to leave. I'm leaning up against this luxury vehicle that he bought me that now I don't know how I'm going to be able to afford because I closed my business down for this relationship. And I asked God, why did this happen to me? And it wasn't one of those, woe is me. It was, I don't care that we're on the West Peach Street, one of the busiest streets in Atlanta. I don't care that there's all these people. I need to know this God because it's me. It's you know me, I know it's me. I'm asking from a humble place. Like, mm -hmm. why, why you mm -hmm. clearly, this is, is this? so dramatic. Yeah. And he said, you're going to be able to change the lives of women like never before. And I was like, could you not have sent me a memo? <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have told me any could other you told way. Me? That was the beginning of a whole, when I say a whole new life, mm -hmm. an entire new path and meeting a version of myself that I didn't know existed. And I never would have walked up to introduce myself to her. I would have never wanted to meet her of my own choice. So purpose is not about your passion because mm -hmm. you can't be passionate about something that you've never done. And there are many things that you have learned to do well, but then there are other things that you've never done that you do even better. Mm. You just haven't met the real you yet. And that's really what I feel like the work is in this season of my life is introducing people to a higher version of themselves that's in this dimension that God has kept secret so that you would have to rise up. You would have to go through the work to enter into this promised land dimension. And that is more than just, you know, basic stuff. It's more than just Instagram flexing and social media, superficial stuff. Mm -hmm. This is the work that if we do this, and again, this is to me still this relationship between love and business. I didn't know that it would be infidelity that would walk me into a new identity that would also elevate me into uh, becoming a millionaire and developing an income and helping others to do the same. So we're not one dimensional. Mm -hmm. So it's not just your love with a re love relationship. It's not just your relationship with your parents. It's not just your, it's we're 360, especially as women. There's multiple chambers of our heart that the more we surrender and the more we get smart mm -hmm. <laughs> and skilled, I think it's just really, we have an unlimited path before us. Yeah, I haven't even asked the question yet. I'm sorry. No, 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 listen, we said a prayer before this yes. and everything that's supposed to come out is going to yes. come out exactly, I, I mean, we could drop the mic on that one. But well, I, I also haven't been out the house. I told you I hadn't Listen, been around you adults. Did, and I appreciate it. Come on, Rashawn <laughs> came out the house for this, y'all. I definitely feel special. And this conversation is already like everything it needs to be. But I want to go back to the, the season that you were in in that moment. Because mm -hmm. you have the Believe Bigger book, the Believe Bigger movement. 
the Believe Bigger message. And I am all about, you know, the power of positive thinking, the Mm -hmm. power of manifestation, you know, your thoughts become all of these things that we know. But sometimes when you're in it, Mm -hmm. it's not as easy to practice it. Right. So what was the season like when you had just gotten out of this? Well, I just thought of a question I wanted to ask before this. So we're going to get back to this. But this question is, what was the season like when you were still going through the hurt, Mm -hmm. but knowing that there was something on the other side? But what I wanted to ask you about that relationship, and then we're going to leave that in the dust. Do you feel like hindsight being 2020, there were signs, Mm. red flags? Mm. And if so, share some of those. Because a lot of people Mm -hmm. think that the red flag is this big thing, but sometimes it's subtle. It's very but all, subtle. I think all of the time we know. Well, the Holy Spirit is subtle. Mm-hmm. You know, people say to trust your gut. My acronym for gut is when God is God uttering timeout. Mm. And I think we have to put context into what it is that we're feeling. If we think it's us and we can doubt us, but if we say, you know, the Holy Spirit loves me so much. The Holy Spirit is going to lead me, guide me, provide for me and protect me. Then I need to listen. I get the blessing of listening. I am blessed to be able to hear. I may not know fully what I'm hearing, how to process it. Going through counsel, well, it wasn't just going through counseling. It was after I called things off. That's when I became truly Inspector Gadget. I still had some of his passwords. (laughs) Started doing a little digging. If I were real, if, 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 what I really wanted to do, this is, this is girl chat, right? This what is. I really wanted Tell to do it. was log into his Facebook, put a whole post out there so everybody would know what he did, so his clients would know, mm-hmm, because some, mm-hmm. it wasn't just that woman, there were others. I was like, so when he went on that business trip, this, I was able to look, I had his email, access to you his email. You were able to connect the dots. I was able to connect so many dots, and I thought, one, how reckless. Um, but what, I mean, there are moments where I, I told some of my girlfriends, like, we'll fly to Chicago with you. We'll keep the car. We'll get out. <laughs> we'll do the time to get, like we had, we had those moments. Mm-hmm. We had those moments, but yes, there were signs. And some of it was as subtle as one day we were at a, eating at a restaurant. And I remember he tried to feed me something off of his fork and I didn't want it. He was very frustrated that I didn't want to eat off his fork. Wasn't major, he didn't yell at me, wasn't disrespectful, but I just noticed a change in energy where it was like, I should have been grateful that he offered it. I just didn't want it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And was that a glaring sign? No, but was it it an indication of control or um, him finding validation in me needing him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. It's like nobody would know that but me. Like Mm -hmm. I was, you can't, nobody can tell. that's not something you would tell somebody. That's not something you would tell someone. People are like, girl, you tripping. Yeah. Yeah. Girl, stop playing. Exactly. That's what they would say. Mm -hmm. And, but there were other things. The biggest thing though, that was the most consistent is that even after saying yes, and I was so excited about the engagement and I, I was really, I was, I can't even put into words the feeling of being a bonus mom to three kids. The baths at night, having three kids that you didn't birth call you mom. It was so much sweeter than television, book deals, money, sitting on the 50 yard line for NFL game. Like the mom thing was so, so, um, but I never felt full peace, Mm -hmm. but I thought I was young and I just was nervous or I couldn't put, I couldn't point to one thing though. And there were a few other things that were, um, things I should have paid more. I should have I should have been braver to ask more direct questions. Mm, mm -hmm. And your life depends on who you're connected to. You know, um, when I will tell you this, I don't think I've ever talked about this. I may have put it in the book. I don't know. But I do know I asked him at the airport with Homeland Security, not that far away. I said, did you at least use protection? And when he said no, and I held on to my virginity for 30 years, I was literally ready to pick up, not the butter knife, but whatever the sharpest forks were. (laughs) I was so offended. He could have lied. He could have just said yes. He could have lied. He, he, it could have actually, it was actually for a bad ending. It was one of the most blessed breakups I could have had because he wasn't bitter. He was, he was very apologetic. Most women, most of us never get an apology Mm -hmm. from someone who does us wrong. And he, he said he was unprepared to be the person I needed. 
So I could hear that with my heart. It helped me to move forward. And I want to say that for any woman also who may never hear that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He had done a lot of dirt, but he was a, and not every man will be able to say that, but I think it helps if you could just borrow that apology yeah. versus waiting for it. Yeah. Um, or but, seeking it because a lot of people stay in the yeah. thing because they're going they're mm -hmm. not even necessarily going back but they they're longing for yeah. that closure that sometimes it's not coming yeah and I didn't leave like I, I ended it but then it's like how do you unwind a life that you just built you know we had started a new business together we had I was on the insurance like we had blended these mm -hmm. these lives I had purchased we we purchased this place together so how do you unwind that and in that process how do you unwind your heart from three kids? So it took a little while. I will, I will say that I could say that I was super strong. I feel like I had a, a courageous, grace-filled day the day I called it off. But then not being, trying to say, can we work this out? Like that went on for a few months. Mm -hmm. And um, I am grateful that he was wise enough to know that he wouldn't be ready. Right? One day he said, I'm sorry I ruined your life. And I said, God whispered, I was in my kitchen at this moment, and God said, don't, agree, don't come into agreement with that statement. So part of me wanted him to feel bad and say, yeah, you didn't do that. I said, you didn't ruin my life. My life wasn't yours to ruin. Exactly. That's, that's what I was thinking. You don't that, have the power to ruin nothing. That, but so many of us will lean into that mm -hmm. emotion and go into, we want to make them feel bad because he felt bad. But not coming into agreement with that, I believed, opened up, a, opened up the life I was being invited into. Because sometimes the attack is the invitation. What mm -hmm. seems like an attack, it's actually not an attack. The Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So it's not actually an attack, it's an alignment. If God covers us and protects us, we can't actually be under attack. We go on the attack. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we blame a lot on the enemy when it's really our choices. There were signs there. I wasn't... I wasn't the person capable of seeing that, to be able to say no to that, to be correct. So you wouldn't recognize what you don't have yet in your skill set, in your emotional skill set, in your spiritual skill set, until you're faced with the reality mm -hmm. of what happens when you ignore yourself, mm -hmm. when you ignore the Holy Spirit, when you ignore your gut. I prefer to call it the Holy Spirit than relying on me because I'm not that good. Yeah. And, and you'll question it every time. Yes. But when you know, I say your God instinct, your gut instinct, yes. your God instinct. Yes. It really That's is. Good. You know, it's all those times when we're like, dang, something told me. And it's like when something tells you, you got to listen. Because yeah. that something is that little whisper. That something is spirit giving yes. you that direction that you don't even know that you mm -hmm. need. Um, so how did you move forward in faith because you're obviously a very spiritual woman you know that this is just a season I'm just going through this right now but sometimes it's still hard to see beyond like there really is going to be a light at yeah. the end of this tunnel so how did you keep the faith while you were going through the thing yeah the thing was really ugly because you asked about what was it like in that season and the first answer I was going to say was it was snotty mm -hmm. like snotty 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 and um um, I was on the side of my bed. I wasn't, I don't even know, I probably hadn't even bathed that day. I knew I needed help. I had asked the pastor who was marrying us, whose wife was one of my, my big sister, best friends. Everyone in my family was hurt, including them, because they felt they missed it, because he counseled us. And so people were trying to help, but they were also traumatized mm -hmm. by it. And no one has anything good to, everyone tries their best, they just can't find the right words. So one day I'm sitting on the side of the bed in my pajamas. I probably, like I said, it wasn't pretty, but I had my Bible and I came across the scripture, Isaiah 28, for Isaiah 48, verse 21. And it says, he led them through the desert, he split the rock and then water gushed out. And I sat with that scripture for days because it fascinated me. I was like, I never heard of a lot of water coming out, out of rock. rock. How does that work? I had dreams about, like almost tor tormenting dreams about being in deserts and being left alone. So the timing of finding it captured me, captivated me. And then one day the Holy Spirit said, he showed me the water as a new life. And I said, wait a minute, God, are you trying to tell me that, first I was mad. I was like, you're trying to tell me you put me in the desert? <laughs> like you brought me here? Like this is... There's a, and then, then there's a little, not a lot, just a little bit of peace of like, there's a plan or at least you're present. And so then I was like, I'm at least willing to find out 
what the water is about. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I call it a split rock moment, because in the word it says he split the rock. And so each of us have these split rock moments that are moments of turn. It's not just difficulty. We're talking about a, a course correction. If we don't recognize it, we'll stay stuck in it. Mm -hmm. So for me, it, that scripture was helpful for me to believe something spiritually bigger was available, but I did not rush into um, helping people. I ended up going to counseling twice a week. You helped yourself. I helped myself. I learned myself. I learned I didn't know how to date myself. I didn't know how to go to movies by myself. I mean, I just worked. Mm -hmm, I was mm -hmm. just used to achieving all the time. So the best thing, but it, 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 there were, I mean, it's a year and a half of that. So there were moments where I felt like I would never be good. You know, like I, I doubted whether the sky was blue because betrayal can change you. Mm -hmm. People say that women are crazy. I think that men have not always protected our hearts and they have not been, the, the things that have happened particularly in America with black men, they haven't been nurtured themselves to be able to know the sacredness of our heart mm -hmm. as like the first woman on the planet. The original. And so when we have our hearts broken by our protector, it's not, it's, it's one thing when someone drops you. It's another thing when it's the very person who was sent to protect you or you thought was there to protect you. Right. And so you didn't, I, there was no safety net emotionally. I didn't, I gave up everything, my house, my business, my income. So I've got these degrees from Georgetown University Law School. I'm admitted to practice before the Supreme Court. I've got all of these success. I've got you know, the sports roster. And in the midst of this very early on, ESPN is like, hey, we want you to, because I started doing TV commentary, not just for getting my athletes booked, but for my, I was like the brand expert of how do you, when, when athlete did something wrong, mm -hmm. what do they do to fix their image? Um, Tiger Woods is cheating on his wife. Can you come and talk about it? So you can actually go on YouTube on my channel on Marshawn Evans, and you can look back and see my sports channel on there. You'll see my eyes are red. As women, we push through, mm -hmm. and they didn't know. Um, I didn't know how I was going to rebuild. So now I'm emotionally broken, spiritually broken. Financially, I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. And essence that I said when um, afterwards, I was supposed to go to this big event that Essence was having, having in Chicago. And I didn't need a plane ticket for it because we were supposed to leave from the wedding. We were scheduled to leave from the wedding to go to Chicago for this event. And then I humbly had to ask Essence to buy a ticket for me because I couldn't, couldn't afford it. They didn't ask me. Um, I'm okay. They didn't ask me why I needed it. Mm -hmm. They just uh, said, sure. And that event was the first time that I, I felt like I was sleepwalking. And there are people to this day who are like, I was at that event. I was, my book table was next to Michelle McKinney Hammond, who's written like 40 books. She's now a close friend. And she's like, I found my purpose that day. Mm. You defined it. <laughs> so you can be sleepwalking and be really Through effective. The pain. Through the pain. And so what was that time like? I was trying to figure out everything mm -hmm. and still holding up. But I did pull back. I did learn the power of um, rest, like really disengaging of you know, social media wasn't then what it is now. Facebook was new. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There was no Instagram. Right. So it wasn't, but pulling back from that, um, it gave me a chance to really hear God where I, where, when I say my life depended, like my future, my confidence, everything really depended on that. So, I mean, I had to really relearn how to, I'll say it this way. I really had to learn myself. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what I didn't know about the same body and mind and spirit that I had been living in for my whole life. Mm -hmm. So just going to the movies, just um, dating myself, going to the gym, taking a year of literally just self-care. Now, that sounds really good, but how is I going to pay my bills? Because mm -hmm. the mortgage company, uh, the, they all don't the, care what you went they through. They didn't care I was on a spiritual journey to find God, right? So this is why I believe in building your ark before the rain. All of the seeds that I had planted 
for years in being a professional speaker because that was my business even before and while I had my sports agency. Mm -hmm. It's my most consistent business that I'll always keep in space and place because speakers are the ones that move the masses. Yep. You will always be able to attract. I believe it's the most powerful income attraction tool in the world. And um, I've made millions teaching people to become speakers, to how to speak for pay. But I wasn't teaching anybody this skill yet. It's something that I had done since I was in my early 20s, paid. And then pri prior to that, before, back when they had VHS tapes is when I started. I don't even know if you know what those I are. I forget we have an age gap. I don't even know I if you know, know what they are. VHS I know you've heard about them before. I had several. Okay. Y'all saw she stumbled. You I did she, have several. Cassette tapes, VHS. Now, said. if you would have said A track, that, now that was before my time, but VHS, cassette tapes, I'm your but, girl. She brought up cassette tapes. <laughs> <laughs> but if you think about um, today, we can send an email and make a pitch for something and mm -hmm. someone can say yes or no. Back then, we had to send out folders of our materials they had to be high quality and only speakers bureaus would represent you all okay. those kinds of things. so i'd been doing this for a long time nobody i had i competed at miss america in 2000 and 2001 mm -hmm. competed during 9 11. um wow. the attack happened while we were entering into the first day of rehearsals wow we're in new jersey a skip away from mm -hmm. new york new york mm -hmm. right and i'm miss dc representing our nation's capital it was very humbling to realize you're going for a crown for yourself and then this devastation happens. But um, so I had been speaking for a long time and I had learned a lot because even as Miss DC, my point in bringing this, that up, as Miss DC, I thought for sure the Washington Speakers Bureau or some huge Speakers Bureau will finally represent me. And they wouldn't. And I, w I remember sending an email out using AOL dial-up. Does she remember that? <laughs> I do. The, the AOL, you had to put it in with the CD and install it on your computer? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so how it got there, she remembers more than me. I give you your credit. I give you your props you. now. Thank you. <laughs> I get called auntie now, so I have to realize that, you know. Do you like it, or are you like, don't call me that? I've, uh, I've, I've um, accepted the season of when people say that, they're saying they see wisdom. Yes, and it's never a disrespect. Yeah. I, you know, some people are like, don't call me I just thought that I was still the same. I still think I'm mm -hmm, 30. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, um, I, you know, we'll talk offline or whenever about college, and I do think that we can age backwards, even with our black that don't crack. We can even have extra help with that. But um, so I don't mind it now. I think it's growing into a new season of leadership. Mm -hmm. But um, what were we talking about? You were saying they wouldn't represent you. They and you sent them an email me. on AOL. Yep. And um, I decided I was going to teach myself this. I mm -hmm. There was only men that were really well-paid professional speakers. Nobody had their own website. So in 2000, I remember when I won Miss DC, my managers went and bought MarshawnEvans.com. And I had never thought about buying my own domain before, but it bothered me that somebody else owned it. So mm. I wanted to buy back .com, .whatever, all myself. Um, and as soon as I could, I created my own website. I learned how to do media kits, um, speaker bios, which is not the same as a normal bio. I learned all of the things, taught myself it, and built a multi-six-figure platform as a speaker in my 20s before... Instagram, Facebook, mm -hmm, without mm -hmm. knowing anything about internet marketing um, and learning how to get booked at some of the biggest companies in the world, colleges, corporations, colleges, churches. Now I call those the core four. And um, so being a planting those seeds when my life fell apart and the bottom fell out, I told God, how am I going to pay the bills? He said, just trust me. Now, we don't really know what that means. And some can hear this and say, I'll just stop doing everything. But the question is, Noah could just ride in the ark because he built it first. Sometimes the obedience is operating in the idea you have. Mm -hmm. Because God really gave him a blueprint, but he gave him an idea of something for something he didn't fully know what was coming. Right. And to build at that massiveness, he's asking us in this season to build something massive and to start somewhere mm -hmm. with a piece of wood. Even if you don't know the whole vision. Even if you don't know the whole vision. And I look back at it now and understand why it's so important. If you are moved by God truly, God's always, God is futuristic. Mm -hmm. He invites us into a place he's already been. We, we're catching up to mm -hmm. what he has. And so by doing that, that year that I took off, I didn't have speaking engagements like every day of the week like I was used to traveling, but I had more than enough. I remember having a yellow piece, a yellow uh, legal pad, and it was January, and I 
had written out how many speaking engagements came in. Like I could feel the presence of God every time one came in. It was a promise. Mm-hmm. I said I prom- and it, it, it was for an achiever. Stopping is hard. It feels like punishment. Whew. Feels like being benched. And you're the quarterback. Yeah. You've decided you're the quarterback in your life, and mm-hmm. now the coach is benching you. And he's asking you to trust him, but he, because you trusted him then, you built the ark that he needed to sustain you. And this is the part that we miss. You know how we miss it? This is Coach Marshawn now. You know how we miss it is we miss it by saying it's too expensive to invest in that. We miss it by saying, oh, I'm not ready yet. Mm-hmm. We miss it by um, saying, well, the people in there, they don't look like me, and I want to be, work with someone who looks like this. And there's nothing wrong with that unless that's where you're suppo- not supposed to be or mm-hmm. where you are mm-hmm. supposed to be. So the first mentor I had that is the one that helped me to become a millionaire and condensed the time tremendously. She didn't look like me, and she didn't believe like me, but I was certain that that's who I was signed to be under. And she is the only person in that season who, although not a believer in Christ, um, who told me that going wholeheartedly in the message of Godfidence was the path. Not a pastor told me that. She taught me about money, taught me about money mindset, success, business. I got to see her operate in a space with her husband and also um, her kids. It's the first time I saw an au pair. We were talking about mm-hmm, au pairs. Mm-hmm. And I saw she lived, her home was a bed and breakfast. Had, she had a driver pick me up. Next level. <laughs> she had a butler. And she showed me personal assistant versus her, her business ex- executive assistant. So I saw a different world that was 360. And I remember looking at, I did that first $12,000 mastermind that I talked about earlier mm-hmm. with her. And then at the end of the year, I grew so much. I was like, I'd love to do the top tier program, but it's 100K. And I'm like, I know I could do 50K. And I went up to her and her husband at the end of a master, uh, during lunch break, and I said, do you, you know, I was wondering if there was an option to do like that, the private tier with you all that doesn't involve getting a limo and first class airfare and the hotel. I really just, I mean, your brain is more important to me than the experience. I don't mm-hmm. need to feel luxurious. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I need to learn how to get to this Millie faster. And make myself feel luxurious. She said, we literally just mapped out a 50,000 program two days ago. Uh, she asked her husband to go grab it, and I was the first one who did it because I, I don't, I just think everything was aligned. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, everything was aligned. And so, um, I don't know. Even the faith that that took, though, yeah. because we talk about investments. Yeah. Somebody heard you say 12K, and they were like, whew. Yeah. Sis, 12K. Me too, back then. But then you say 50, and that, that's more than some people make in a year. Yeah. So the, the mindset that it takes to, to know that you're worth that mm-hmm. investment, because I think a lot of times yes. we aren't willing to invest because we don't really trust that we'll make good on Correct. the investment. Because we lie to ourselves mm-hmm. every day and we mm-hmm. quit every day. On every ourselves. day. So we mm-hmm. have this history that only we know of all of the times we let ourselves down. And then we're like, OK, I can't afford to let myself down on a fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollar investment. So even coming through these seasons to get to the place where you knew that you we're going to make good on that investment, I think just says a lot yeah. about where you were in that space. I think when you make high-end investments, um, it's not a cost. You know, it's not a fee that you're paying. You're paying access into a VIP admission the same way you would in a club, mm-hmm. right? There's a different caliber of experience. And to me, I'm the, you know, you may not know this phrase, but nobody puts baby in the corner. I've heard it. Oh, no, that's a lie. <laughs> That's a lie. This I've heard 80s. it. I don't know this the origin. I don't know the origin. I wasn't origin. old enough to watch the movie. I think it's Dirty Dancing. I wasn't old enough to watch the movie when it came out. But there's a phrase where this girl, she's learning dancing, and she's, I guess, comes from this conservative background, and this teacher, Patrick Swayze, I think it's Patrick Swayze, mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. teaching her to dirty dance, mm-hmm, whatever. Mm-hmm. And somehow she gets stuck in the corner, and she says, nobody puts baby in the corner. So it's kind of an epic phrase. But I have that attitude of I felt like there was a whole level of life that was operating that I didn't know anything about. Mm-hmm. Now, mind you, today, if you, today you can look online and see coaches and see millionaires made through coaching. In 2010, there were very few women. There were no women of color. There was no women of color of faith. Mm-hmm. And um, it was actually a very intimidating season, but um, it, I, I was like, there's a level of life happening without me. I have to know it. So how could I afford not to do it? Because mm-hmm. if I go with my budget, 
We ain't getting that. If I go with my budget, I'm going to build at a level that I'm already comfortable with. If it doesn't stretch you, then it's not going to accelerate you. So you have to go with your belief and not your budget. Yeah, you got to go with the belief of what you believe is waiting for you. What God has for you. Yes. Yeah. And who, here's the most mature question that someone can ask who's in a season of reinvention is, um, God, who are you sending me to help me go to the next level? Because then when someone shows up who is gifted, talented, successful, and has what I call the calibraic mantle, it's not a real phrase, it's just something that I call it. There's mantles in terms of what is it that you're gifted for, that God has designed you for. Some people ministry, some people industry, some people, you know, different. I think that you've got to understand what is the mantle that you believe you're called into. Mm -hmm. I know that this, I have a money mantle. I also have a mantle that's built around helping people to grow closer with the Holy Spirit. I don't know what you call that one exactly. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't call it ministry per se because it puts people in it. So, um, but also I like having a track record of actual success versus talking about what's possible. Because I can say Ford, Toyota, um, Hyundai, um, Nike, Rolls Royce, Delta. I can say here are places where I've gained understanding through experience. Mm -hmm. So when I say calibraic mantle, does someone have the mantle at the caliber of where you're being called to? And if you see people who are, if you see everyone who looks alike and is doing everything alike, and that's what you gravitate to, you're actually gravitating towards um, a melding where there's nothing unique versus you should see somebody who is like someone you've never seen, mm -hmm. who speaks in a way that you've never heard before, who awakens something, and if it, if it does that, then you should be like, what do I need to do to sit at this person's feet? That's a different mindset, that's a different mentality, and that will take you into different spaces, not where they are. Mm -hmm. Person with the right calibraic mantle will not take you where they've been. They'll take you to where they've never been. We're lazy. We like to look at who's got what I've got so that I can get what they've got. Mm -hmm. the Versus right who's going to help me get what I'm supposed to have. You, to, the word education is taught poorly in this world, especially in America. The root word of education, the Latin is educere. Educere means to draw out. Mm. What we look at education is what can we put, put in? in? What can I tell you? And the, the dangerous thing about the whole life changer, guru, influencer, coaching space is that most people are clones. Because most people who are coaching have never done the deep work. They've never really delved into their split rock. They took the cheap route of just getting a course that would teach them just enough skills so they mm -hmm. could make just enough income. And you never became great at what you did, but people are really hurting. When Miss USA took her life, Chesley, um, when she jumped off that building, as beautiful as she was, and I had been in Miss America, I had, I've helped Miss USA's win Miss USA and Miss Universe. That rocked me as a black woman to see someone so accomplished, so beautiful, TV opening up, and um, the reason these things are happening on our watch is because we are experts with no depth. Mm -hmm. People can't Surface eat level. off of your pictures on Instagram. They cannot eat off of, they cannot, they're, they're, we're not deep enough wells for people who have actual issues and problems and challenges. And so the, 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 the unfortunate thing about the industry today is that it's just so simple and cheap and easy. We're just trying to flex. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it doesn't mean we're gonna truly change people's futures and it certainly doesn't mean we're gonna help them get into eternity. And so for me, I believe you've gotta look for someone who has a calibraic mantle that awakens something in you and it should intimidate you enough to, if you're mature enough, you're saying this is someone who's gonna help me become who I've been called to be. To Call, what's call it what the higher thing that is calling you the thing you can't even wrap your mind around and that person may have some glimpse because you've probably experienced this where someone can see something in you you know they had that phrase back in the day in the movie I, I see dead people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I Six see sense. prosperous people I see, you see that in people I do that's your gift and you want someone who can see that for you that you can't see for yourself even if they've never fully been where, where you're, you're going, going but you know that there's nobody else who awakens that, but that can also intimidate people. They don't build their arc 
and then the season comes where they need something to sustain them, like I needed those speaking engagements, and we didn't build anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we're asking, God's asking us to rest. We have nothing to rest on. Yeah. I think we're seeing, Marshawn, why you are the reinvention strategist, because you have lived so many lifetimes <laughs> in this short life. Mm -hmm. I mean, from the, the pageantry to the apprentice mm -hmm. to the sports to the wife and the mm -hmm. mommy. So we got to get into the good. Yes. We got to get into the good because, you know, you talked about the the um, connection that you had as the bonus mom. Yes, yes, yes. But yes. baby. Come through. Come through <laughs> with the triplets. Yes. So I want to talk just briefly about the, the, the culmination of it all coming together. Because, again, when you're in the darkness and when, yeah. you're, when you're in those seasons, it's like I have hope for these things but do I really know, you yes. know, do I really know that these things are going to come to fruition? So I often find myself now that I have the things that were on my vision board, not just being happy to have it, but mm -hmm. wanting to be a word of encouragement for someone else who still longs for it. Yes. So if you could just speak to the woman who is still in that season of like, I trust God, but God, where are you? Like, mm -hmm. I trust God, but where are the things? Because my vision for my life doesn't match the view that mm -hmm. I currently have. Right. So having the things now, having the life, can you offer a word of encouragement for someone who just isn't there yet? Yeah. I think the first word is it gets better. Mm -hmm. It will be better. And the next word is keep going. Mm -hmm. The third word is don't do it by yourself. Yes. Okay. So that's the basic thing. Um, you can borrow other people's faith. You know, I believe you know, believe bigger is not about believing bigger for stuff. B-I-G mm -hmm. stands for built in God. Believing bigger means believing bigger than what you've been through. Mm. And that there is something greater that God is taking you to. So my word is there is something greater and better that God has taken you to. And it may look different than what you anticipate and what you expect. But there is not, a, I am not debating this with you. I am telling you there is something great in store for you. And God has sent us here today to tell you that it gets better, but it's going to be better than what you can imagine. Yes. And so if you would, that's believing bigger. That's daring to believe beyond, would you say, your current In view current point? View, yeah. And um, when you do that, you got to, we've also got to start praying what I call better prayers than beggar prayers. So my husband, Jack, um, when he, he was the one who encouraged me to write the book, Believe Bigger, to tell my story because I didn't want to do that. I preferred just talking about branding and business and mm -hmm, sales. Mm -hmm. But the truth is there's a story behind millions. Yep. There's a mess behind it yep. that created, I think, a level of depth that is we try as a company to be a safe place for people who are um, the best. They're just hidden gems, but they're, they're, they, they don't even know how great they are. Mm -hmm. Be a safe place for that. But when he told me to write the book, um, I think it, first of all, it takes a very state secure man to tell you to write a story about another man. Mm -hmm. But he does, he is kind of the happy ending. He is. <laughs> very he much is. so. He is. Um, but when I was going through that season, I didn't know how to pray. And my friends didn't know what to say. And so after writing the book, Believe Bigger, and it did really well, I had an opportunity to do, I, I, my, my email list is mostly devotionals. So I don't market the way most people market as business coaches. I send out devotionals mm -hmm. on my quiet time with God. That is what I've done for the last 12 years. Mm -hmm. And um, I always wanted to write a book about it. I never, it wasn't a priority though, but I got an opportunity with my partners now at Day Spring. And um, it's called 100 Days of Believing Bigger. And I wrote it while I was pregnant with triplets. Mind you, I was a bonus mom to three kids. At the time, I couldn't even imagine finding someone else. I was broken by being a mom and that being literally feeling like it was ripped out of me. Taken away. Mm -hmm. And for the way, when I say it is better <laughs> and it is bigger and it is exceedingly and abundantly, Ephesians 3.10, now unto him who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you could ever hope, think, or imagine. I, at the age of 40, had three babies in 2020. In what, like 20, six minutes? Three babies in six minutes. Every two minutes, they brought another one out. But like that scripture is real. Mm -hmm. It is real. It, when I say three babies in 2020, so in Ephesians 3.20, so I, I was writing these prayers and this devotional 
while I'm daring to believe bigger, listening to the doctors saying that I'm geriatric, because I'm 40, listening to them tell me that I had a 4% likelihood of all three babies going full term. So the prayers that I write in 100 Days of Believing Bigger are truly believe bigger prayers, where we don't pray what if, we pray as if. We've not mm. been taught to pray well. This is not name it, frame it, claim it. This is entering into the language of God as we pray. And when you develop this, you begin to pray that over your life. You pray it over your mind, you pray it over your kids, mm -hmm. and then you pray it over your business. You pray it over your income, you pray it over your future. We question God, like why do we go and beg God? God, please help me. No, God, thank you for the help that is already on the way. Mm -hmm. Subtle difference major difference, difference in terms of because impact. we're entering into agreement with what mm -hmm. heaven's already doing mm -hmm. but belief is what enables us to access that and so um um i forgot the question because no <laughs> that's that's it they need to get the 100 well, days of because this is going to help them form these you prayers asked how to what what someone is going through yeah. and i think part of it is us you know when you're going through things people don't mean to say the wrong thing, but they can create more sadness and mm -hmm, more drama. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I learned that when people ask me what happened, that they were not assigned to be in my life in that season because it wasn't, it was, it was tea for you, but it was, um, it was hot. It was horrible for me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to have to relive that and to tell it again. And that means you were just curious and nosy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but my real friends and you, you know, that's a separation season of learning who your whole life is going to start reorganizing. Um, they, they just said, what do you need? And I'm there for you. It wasn't, and sometimes they were quiet because this is why you need good spiritual girlfriends too, that know when not to say anything and to let God come and meet you personally. Mm -hmm, Cause mm -hmm. then what'll happen is we'll develop an addiction to somebody else's time with God. And we never get the get intimacy. You never get to learn. You, you need something that you can hang on to that nobody else can ever tell you and that nobody else can tell you that is true or false. So that day when I was leaning up against the car and he said, you're gonna be able to change the lives of women like never before, I didn't know what that meant. I had zero picture. I wasn't trying to rush into being this helper. I didn't know what he meant. I knew he meant it. And it was the one thing that I could anchor into that said at least there's something else coming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That I, but not this coming. When something else is coming, it means there's something else I'm becoming. Right. Because we look at it, name it, frame it, claim it, wait, waiting for it to arrive in the mailbox. No, it's you are you. the mailbox. It's you. You're the delivery system. God uses through you, not to you. It's through you. And I believe even in that moment, um, going from being a bonus mom to a birth mom of three babies, <laughs> I never get tired. Like, it still amazes me when I see them. Um, that moment where he said, you'll change the lives of women like never before, I have to constantly remind myself that they were included in that intention that day when I was leaning up against that car. In the days as a mom, I am good in business. I am a first time mom <laughs> who had three babies in the middle of a pandemic with no help because our parents couldn't travel. Mm -hmm. It was the very beginning there were no vaccines. There was a math shortage. You couldn't even get Clorox. <laughs> you know, um, so it was a very different time. And the prayer that I would pray every day when it was time for us to change shifts, because it was my husband and I round the clock with three babies. And I had, a, had to have an emergency procedure 10 days after because I was still bleeding heavier than I should have been. And this is an important thing for women. We have to advocate for ourselves. Because they said, it's probably normal. Come in. They do an ultrasound. They're like, you can't go home, we mm -hmm. gotta admit, admit you right away. My first baby had been released from the hospital. She's in the car with my husband. And um, I had to go into the whole process by myself. Mm -hmm. And so I prayed the prayer when we would do shift changes before I would leave the bedroom to go downstairs because our girls actually slept in the living room for the first few months. It was the easiest way to take care of all of them. Plus they were so tiny. I said, God, I thank you that I'm capable, chosen, worthy, and ready. It's easy to believe that in something you've done before, but in something that is such a big stretch. Um, I had to pray that, I pray that prayer still, and um, that moment leaning up against the car, God constantly reminds me that the women he was talking about are not just the women that are watching and mm -hmm, that are, mm -hmm. they're the, the women that you're, I didn't know he was talking about who I was gonna birth. I didn't know, and our, I am, I'm grateful for all of it. I wouldn't 
there's not a part of me that wants to repeat that hard season. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, but if, it means, it, if it means those three girls that came out every two minutes, if it means a husband that um, is faithful and funny and um, the biggest supporter, I wasn't capable of what I was praying for until I went through the things that take you into what you're made for. Yes. Yes. Come on, made for. Okay, listen, Marshawn. Yeah, yeah. We went deep. Okay, we're deep. We went deep, but what are you talking about? I cannot. I can't twerk. I so can't. No, we ain't going to have you twerk, but I have. <laughs> I do have one last question. Okay. We got to talk about this crypto thing. Yes. Because if, if so one more person that. tells me, you got to get into crypto. Yes. I did like Forex for like a month okay. and I felt like a gambler. I had to quit yeah, because it was just like you win some money, I win some money, you lose some money, and then I'm depressed. It does feel like this. It, yeah. I but like I know you've chasing. created this whole movement yeah. of helping other women who have, you know, been successful in one lane, but there's a whole world mm -hmm. out there that we can tap into. Yes. So talk briefly about what you doing with crypto and how can we do it too? Well, I wanted to get into crypto, NFTs, Web3, but I didn't know where to start. We see it happening all around us, but we, it's happening without us. Yes. And so I delved into it first through trading and then realized there's so many other ways that we can make money in the cryptocurrency space where the market is up or down. Mm -hmm. And so I just jumped all the way in and I asked my friend circle, I asked about 70 women, are you trading in anything in the markets? And these are all successful women, many seven-figure, eight-figure earning women. Um, like out of 70, 65 said, I don't know how to trade at all. Mm -hmm, I've mm -hmm. never done it. So I realized that there are very successful women like myself who've never traded. I was the woman who said my husband does that for me mm -hmm. and for us, which he does. And he's built a seven-figure portfolio. But I didn't. this new economy of cryptocurrency is going to be the currency of my daughters. Yes. And I don't want them to feel like they don't have a level, an ability to have mastery. So I needed to start that process for myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not built to not take others along. And so I am building this community of women that I call money movers um, to learn how to get into cryptocurrency, um, opening up spaces inside of a hedge fund for women to be able to get into. So whether you're an accomplished, um, high profile person, if you're someone who is like, I've never done I've never even been in business before. Mm -hmm. This economy is like the gold rush. We, right. cannot, and we can't get left behind. We can't afford. Let me just say this. You might be intimidated. My goal first in this first phase is to destigmatize to make it not so intimidating. Mm -hmm. It's not hard. It's just new. Mm -hmm. It's like riding a bike. It's might learning be new. cell phones. Yes, we, it's just new. Yes. But beyond the cell phone, that's an expense. This is if you had an opportunity to be able to buy land in America when the country was being founded. This is the time we're living in right now. And so um, I am excited about really building an army, army of what I call financially intelligent women who operate in this space, who have a diversified portfolio. We learn, we grow together. And you know, if you don't know and can't find the table you're looking for, you've got to build it and put the table together yourself. And so I've decided to be the table to invite other women and the fellas, if you don't mind some pink, <laughs> <laughs> to sit at this table as well, too. And so um, people can go to marshawn.com forward slash crypto just to hear about it. Yeah. But um, you can't, we can't, it, we can, you know, the digital divide when the Internet came out, the, those who didn't have access to the Internet, their kids got left behind yep. in school. This is not going to be kids. This is going to be entire families. Mm -hmm. Generations, because if you miss are it. Being, billions yeah. and billionaires are being created. Millionaires are being created overnight. We cannot, and the digital, the, the crypto digital divide that's going to happen is going to be so great. So for me, this is building the arc, but you can't invite, you can only invite people onto it like Noah did. You can't make people actually you can't get on. can't make them. Yes. So for the people who want to come on mm -hmm. and the people who want to grab your books, yeah. Marshawn.com for everything. Yeah. You can go to Marshawn.com. Believebigger.com has all of the book stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you go to Marshawn.com, you can get on my email list and hear about all the good things. And get the devotionals. The devotionals, um, we have a prayer card set in there, and there's always new stuff. Just signed a few more book deals. So Come on, signed a few more coming. book deals. Listen, we got to get you some we, book deals. She said it. Y'all heard it here we first. Get we got to get deals. your girl a book deal. Deals. Um, I said deals, deals with the S. With an S. I, I, I receive it. <laughs> yes. Claiming it and it. receiving it. Y'all, 
This has been so good. This is such a good like, conversation. Like, Thank you no, so much. That's not enough. Okay. Hold on, hold on, because I got to squeeze you. Okay. I got to squeeze okay. you. Okay. Y'all, another amazing episode. Game changing, life changing information. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to another episode of the Girls Stop Playing podcast. See you on the next episode.